10,000 dead, one in 200 Gazans killed, a Palestinian child slaughtered every 10 minutes for a month, and Frau von der Leyen's answer to this graveyard for children is to tell Israel to avoid civilians, be as targeted as you can, while well, that displays some neck. You can't even call for it to stop. You can't even call for a ceasefire. Well, of course you can't, because these crimes against humanity are being carried out with your weapons, in your name, when you stood with Israel a month ago and you said you'd stand with them now and in the days to come. So don't come in here trying to wipe the blood off with belated concern. It's not not just Israel's genocide, it's yours and The Hague isn't good enough for you. Welcome everybody to a special edition of the Monthly Daily, where we follow the EU parliamentarians Claire Daly and Mick Wallace in their quest for talking sense into a senseless institution. Today I want to show you their speeches in the always empty halls of the EU Parliament on Israel's genocide against the Palestinians in the first six weeks of this crime against humanity. It is such a sad sight to hear these two heroes say what we all know and the rest of these politicians is either absent or they proactively support genocide. But no one shall ever say that they didn't know or that it was hard to speak up. There are those who dare to speak if only the collective criminal West had ears to listen. When powerful countries refuse to show respect for international law, the less powerful suffer the consequences. According to UN figures, 545 children were killed in Ukraine in 500 days of war. Reports coming from Gaza now say that over a thousand children have been killed in 10 days by the apartheid state of Israel. Over a thousand children in 10 days. And our EU Commission President and the Parliament President went to Israel to give their support to the Israeli onslaught against the Palestinians. An onslaught that has taken the shape of a genocide against innocent civilians trapped in an open-air prison called Gaza. The list of Israel's war crimes grow by the minute. A complete siege, incitement to genocide, forced expulsion, collective punishment, Disproportionate aerial bombardment of the civilian population, civilian structures, hospitals, and humanitarian workers. By offering unqualified support for this grossly disproportionate colonial brutality, the EU leaders and politicians have made themselves complicit in Israeli war crimes. Does the EU care Can about the human rights of the Palestinians? Thank you very much. Now we. Thanks, President. I've been involved in politics for 40 years, but I have never seen anything like what is being unleashed in Gaza. In full public view, while the world watches it unfold. Ten days of relentless airstrikes, one in a thousand people murdered by the Israeli government in a week, open declarations of siege, 24 hours of fuel, electricity and water left, collective punishment on innocent people, all illegal, all war crimes. And when the EU should have been arguing for a ceasefire, for the upholding of international law, for the protection of civilians, Ursula von der Leyen touches down in Tel Aviv to photo up the preparation of a genocide and says Europe stands with Israel now and in the days to come. How dare she? She has no authority in foreign affairs matter. She does not speak for me. She does not speak for Ireland. And she does not speak for the citizens of Europe. We stand for peace. We stand for justice for the people of Palestine and for the upholding of international law. It's long past the time that this woman exited the stage. It's time for her to go and for the International Criminal Court so to the debate, So the debate is closed. Uh, next sitting is tomorrow. Thank you, Shun President. I voted against this motion after a week of horror in Gaza and the EU diving in head first, draping our parliament in the Israeli flag, aiding and betting in war crimes, including the bombing of a hospital. And still we find it impossible to say that Palestinian lives matter. We're still privileging one category of victims over another. We talk about the humanitarian situation in Gaza, 
But why is there a humanitarian crisis? Is it a national disaster? Who cut off the water, fuel and electricity? Are we not sure? Who is bombing Palestinian civilians? Do we not know? Do you think we could mention it? There is a crime unfolding in Gaza now, such as we have not seen since the 1940s, and we are in it up to our necks. We're watching Israel murder Palestinian civilians and preparing to drive millions of them into the Sinai Desert to annex and colonize their land. It's another Nakba. It's a crime against humanity. It's not a humanitarian crisis. The EU will never live down this shame. Long live Palestine. Long live Gaza. We voted against. It doesn't call for a ceasefire and it doesn't treat the victims equally. What Hamas did on October 7th was a brutal act of terrorism. Why do our EU leaders find it so difficult to call out the activities of Israel as terrorism? Why are they so reluctant to actually say that Israel is a terrorist state? Why are they so reluctant to say that Israel behaves like an apartheid state? and refuses to respect international law. Why does the EU still call Israel its like-minded partner? How can this brutal, lawless regime be our like-minded partner? The truth is, the European Union has been complicit with the war crimes that Israel has been carrying out against the Palestinians for years. There will be no justice for Palestinians as long as the US and the EU continue to support the state terrorism of Israel. Thanks, President. A month has elapsed since the commencement of the unrelenting mass murder of Palestinians in Gaza. It's not a spiral of violence, Frau von der Leyen. It's genocide, openly declared and carried out by the apartheid state of Israel. Starvation, bombing, hospitals, ambulances, journalists, humanitarian routes, 10,000 dead, one in 200 Gazans killed, a Palestinian child slaughtered every 10 minutes minutes for a month, and Frau von der Leyen's answer to this graveyard for children is to tell Israel to avoid civilians. Be as targeted as you can. Well, that displays some neck. You can't even call for it to stop. You can't even call for a ceasefire. Well, of course you can't, because these crimes against humanity are being carried out with your weapons, in your name, when you stood with Israel a month ago and you said you'd stand with them now and in the days to come. So don't come in here trying to wipe the blood off with belated concern. It's not not just Israel's genocide, it's yours and The Hague isn't good enough for you. Next speaker. Over 4,000 children have been killed by the colonial Israeli regime in one month. Eight times more children have been killed in Gaza in one month than all of the Ukraine war. Eight times more. And EU leaders are still talking about Israel's right to defend itself. Defend itself? Is bombing hospitals and churches defending itself? Is bombing refugee camps defending itself? Is slaughtering 4,000 children defending itself? I mean, where, where have we gone? There's, there's over 10,000 civilians been killed in Gaza with EU and US weapons. European white supremacy knows no bounds. A genocide is being carried out by a far-right apartheid Israeli regime, and they're doing so with our unconditional support. It is the EU leaders, not only can you not call for a ceasefire, you can't mention the words condemn and Israel in the same sentence. How in God's name is the EU ever going to talk about human rights anywhere again? Thank you, President. We need to talk about Israel. Joe Biden says that if Israel didn't exist, the US would have to invent it. And he's right. It's a rogue state vested in ensuring instability in the region and US geopolitical goals. And the result of this in the last month, it's bombed Palestine, Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, all the while claiming it's the victim. It's occupied parts of these countries and bombed them so often that we don't even generally give it a mention. And so we've got to where we are today, where they're slaughtering children on an unprecedented scale. Children wrapped in bloodied shrouds in their thousands. Children 
under the rubble, even now, maimed and terrified, blinded with chemical agents, gasping for food and water. Children screaming over the bodies of their dead parents, Mama, Mama, wake up, wake up. Well, I for one never thought I'd see such scenes. And the governments of the West may continue to shield Israel, but the people everywhere see it for what it is, including large numbers of Jews. The Zionist project is over. A new Middle East of peace and justice will be built. So, Thanks very much, President. There's probably never been a time where international law and respect for international law has seemed so important. But it's a huge problem. We were right to condemn the Russian invasion of Ukraine because it breached the sovereignty of a country. I don't think we were right, though, to spend billions making sure that it didn't stop. Our lack of consistency in how we talk about international law is killing the EU's credibility. We never had a problem, and we actually assisted wars of aggression in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, and now in Palestine. International law. There's been collective punishment to cut off the water, fuel, and food. They've been bombing the place to smithereens. They've killed 4,000 children. They've killed 10,000 civilians. And you know what? We haven't been able to condemn Israel. How can we ever talk about international law again? One time it comes